Ireland and the world. Lucas Lawman's Kiwi Voice with a lunchtime news update for you. We are uh, got a couple of pertinent uh, articles to cover off um, and just a general news update for you. Thanks, everyone, for taking the time to tune in. Really appreciate you doing so. No more mucking around. Here's what's making news. Nine News is reporting today uh, and picked up by Stuff as well. Uh, if I can just go back to here. Let's get this on board. This will be a good one for uh, some good news, I guess you could say. All unvaccinated travellers can now fly into Aussie without any tests or anything at, at all, as picked up uh, by Nine News. And considering the level to which the Australian government uh, policed COVID restrictions over the past couple of years or so, specifically in Victoria and Western Australia, they have now more moved more rapidly than most countries in terms of easing restrictions uh, and continuing to do so. So that's really good news uh, for Kiwis that have got a little bit of uh, cabin fever and are desperate to get out of New Zealand. I know that is me. Uh, and yep, if you can put to one side uh, how they've handled the COVID situation, it'd be great to get over to Oz nice and easily. Uh, as reported, from Wednesday, international travellers will no longer need to declare their COVID-19 vaccination status to fly into Australia, while unvaccinated Australians and certain groups of visa holders have been able to enter the country for some time. God forbid. All travellers will now be allowed in, regardless of whether they have been immunised or not. It also means passengers won't have to fill in the digital passenger declaration form, which officials admitted needed work. So uh, really, really good news, as I say, good to hear that. And what that has prompted me to do, though, uh, it's got me thinking, I have officially had, I should say, the travel bug right before COVID, got back in from the States, my third trip over there, and really just had plans to go elsewhere. That obviously got put on the back burner. So with this news coming up, I thought it was pertinent to go and take a look at what other countries are up to and some of those key countries that you might want to go and take a nosy at. So let's have a look there. Um, you'll see up on the screen, Australia, obviously, we've seen there's no, no vaccination requirements. Canada, though, must be fully vaccinated, still doesn't matter. USA uh, also must be fully vaccinated. There's no, uh, there's no loopholes or there's no uh, way around that. United Kingdom, it's got no vaccination requirements whatsoever. So if you want to go to the UK, you're all good to go there. France, uh, you can get in because weirdly New Zealand is on a green list with France. Uh, now I've just randomly picked a country, popular country in Europe, of course. There'll be others that are different. But because we're on that green list, which is meant to mean um, COVID transmission isn't rife, but it obviously it is here, uh, you can enter with a negative test. Uh, China, absolutely no entry to the country by anyone. Stay away from there. If you got in, it will probably wouldn't be good. Uh, and Hong Kong is telling us that you need to be fully vaccinated. So uh, interesting to see that and, uh, you know, take a look at what other countries are up to. If you are, like I say, if you have got a bit of the travel bug uh, and it's biting and you want to get out and about there, by all means, take your time, look into all the requirements uh, what you're going to need, both from a, a vaccination status and also any kind of form filling out um, declarations and also what the process is when you're in that country. A little bit of consumer advice, travelling advice for you. Moving on, though, uh, what have we got here? Ah, right. So, yes, this, this was a good one. Probably another good news story as well, team. There has been, as we know, the New Zealand Taxpayers Union has been running the Stop Three Waters Roadshow across the country. Here is a shot here from uh, the uh, a uh, event, and I believe it's in Pukekohe uh, on the 1st of July, in conjunction with Voices for Freedom, Groundswell, and the Refreshing Local Democracy, along with the New Zealand Taxpayers Union. They've, they've joined forces to host this Stop Three Waters event uh, it's a large crowd, as you can see there. 
Uh, and uh, speakers were uh, Libby from Voices for Freedom, doing a great job and continuing on the work that Voices for Freedom do. This is as reported on their Telegram channel. We had Chris uh, Romeo or Romeo uh, from Refreshing Local Democracy. response has been near enough unanimous uh so we've got a couple other shots from the event there as well uh yeah it's been pretty much unanimous across the country as we know it just goes on to confirm that this three waters reform uh is you know no one wants it why are we continuing to push it another great shot of the team there doing great work in front of that large Crowd. So, yeah, it's probably one of the most undemocratic things in New Zealand happening at the moment, uh, if not the most. I mean, there's a number of things to choose from, sadly, in terms of what's actually happening. Uh, but, yeah, the, the Three Waters is so universally derided and opposed, the fact that they continue to push it uh, is just so surprising. But let's move on, uh, though. Well, let's get into some entertainment news, shall we? Why not? Um, I think this is pertinent. It's worth covering off. R. Ah, Kelly, uh, I used to be a fan of his when I was a kid, obviously placed on suicide watch now after being sentenced to 30 years in prison. So a few days ago, he was sentenced to 30 years in prison for his decades-long list of sexual offending towards women and young girls. Official charge was sex trafficking. He is for sure getting all that he deserves. But what's outstanding to me, though, is how we have largely known about this for 20-plus years but it was fairly well overlooked. Uh, a lot of uh, was kept quiet within the entertainment community. The people are coming out now and saying that, ah, oh, just R. Kelly, he was a little bit weird. But obviously, all sorts of dodginess going on there. Um, the musician's 29th June sentencing comes just nine months after a jury found him guilty on all counts of racketeering, bribery, coercion, enticement, and sex trafficking. That's some serious stuff. The charges involved six female victims, including late singer Aaliyah, who married Kelly in 1994 at the age of 15. And I seem to remember that as well. And again, from my memory, which is, what's that, 28 years ago, it's probably a bit fuzzy. Uh, yeah, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't widely derided. I mean, she was 15, it possibly, yeah, just nuts. Also, sort of somewhat in uh, entertainment news and something that has it's got a bit of coverage in mainstream media, I think potentially not enough. Not enough questions are being asked. We've got to ask why those questions aren't being asked. And that is around the Ghislaine Maxwell trial. And obviously that's all concluded. Sentenced to 20 years uh, for sex trafficking crimes. A lot of our watchers will be familiar with what's going, what's going on there. Obviously, her link to Jeffrey Epstein and being the enabler of that whole racket. Uh, what's astounding, though, is we've largely known about this uh, for some time. All the other people involved. Um, she was so. Let's let's take a step back. Glenn was obviously. Uh, helping to run and supply the girls to Jeffrey Epstein. And the conclusion of the trial, though, leaves more questions open than answers. Uh, the Daily Beast has reported uh, that Prince Andrew and Ghislaine Maxwell had intimate relationship, uh, according to an ex-royal cop. Uh, the claims that have put through to the Daily Beast there. Uh, he is one of the many names... Uh, of people and uh, that we are looking at from the Max Maxwell uh, Epstein list. Andrew and Ghislaine, which we'll look at in just a moment, Andrew and Ghislaine were in some sort of relationship, had unrestricted access, or Ghislaine had unrestricted access at Buckingham Palace, and a former royal policeman claims he and other colleagues thought she and Prince Andrew had an intimate relationship that went beyond friendship. 
Paul Page, who served the royal family as an armed protection officer between 98 and 2004, told The Sun Online that Maxwell was allowed to enter and exit the palace night and day at will. Myself and my other colleagues formed the opinion they were in some sort of relationship. I'd love to know in a little bit more detail how these people are involved. Well, sorry, I've gone one step further. So, yeah, so that's that's an interesting But There we were aware of um, Prince Andrew having some uh, form of connection to the whole situation, the whole sordid situation with uh, the Maxwell Epstein trial, but we didn't realise quite how deeply. What the question that hasn't been asked, though, uh, what's up? With this lot, uh, you know, some familiar faces there that have been linked quite closely to Maxwell and Epstein over the course of the last couple of decades and through the trial as well. I'd love to know in a little more detail how these people are involved. Why, oh, why have we not seen their names and others on some sort of list from the FBI or otherwise? I'm sure that these wonderful people have absolutely nothing to hide. So let's get it out there. Breaking news for you also, uh, if you want to call it that, I've just written a note down there. The government has no plans for mandatory isolation for the flu after Michael Baker has come out publicly and requested that on a number of occasions, would you believe, probably the most depressing human in New Zealand at the moment when it comes to day-to-day -day life. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. That is your news update for Monday, the 4th of July. In the States, they're celebrating Independence Day. That'll be tomorrow, incorrectly reported by a number of outlets. Obviously, they are a day behind, so we will have a look at what's going on over there tomorrow as well. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. If you enjoy what we do and these continued live updates, which we're going to try and do most days where possible, uh, day job and other things uh, pending, then by all means, hit that Send Stars button, flick us through a donation of Facebook Stars. We're getting a bit of momentum with that. Or if that's not your thing, head on over to yourkiwivoice.co.nz forward slash contribute. Have a look at what we've got going on there. And uh, if you think you're, we're worth supporting, then chuck a few dollars our way. Thanks, everyone. Stay safe, stay free, and we will see you again real soon.